Hi, I'm Mina Chang and I serve as CEO of Linking the World, the international humanitarian aid organization. First of all, I wanted to thank everyone for their concern over my safety. Um, there have been bombings and kidnappings in Abuja and when I announced that I'd be participating at the World Economic Forum, I was immediately flooded with messages from people telling me not to go. But here I am. Um, I understand the fears for security with you know, our most recent headlines talking about the hundreds of schoolgirls that were kidnapped by a terrorist group. Uh, I have a friend back in Dallas who was kidnapped and held here on his last visit. And just today, um, over eight girls were kidnapped in broad daylight. There is violence occurring here every day. And the argument is that if the Nigerian security forces can barely keep their own citizens safe, and rescue these girls, then what capacity would they have to keep foreign guests safe? Of course, um, being on such a global platform, the attention of such a global event, I'm here surrounded by presidents of nations and heads of state, leaders of major corporations, and some of the most well-known philanthropists of the world. So arguably, this event is one of the best opportunities for a terror group to target in order to spread their message of fear and repression. But Nigeria is a beautiful country with a rich cultural history and it's made up of hard-working, entrepreneurial people. Uh, the heart of the country is made up of the toil and the suffering and the resilience of the people. Unfortunately, the Nigerian government is working against um, an Islamist terror group that's gotten much more brazen and unpredictable. Imagine sending your child off to school proudly in uniform, and they never make it home. It's a parent's worst nightmare, but unfortunately it's the reality for many parents here as over 230 girls were kidnapped by the Boko Haram. Um, the parents are waiting helplessly. Some of the parents got on motorbikes and charged into the woods last week only to come out without being able to find one soldier. Uh, as a parent myself, I don't know what I would do if this happened to my child. One of the programs of Linking the World is called the Global Social Leadership Program and it's one where we work with students during the school day to create leaders that are socially aware on a global scale. Our students discuss tough topics such as hunger, poverty, and gender inequality and communicate with other students around the world to get a global perspective on these issues. One of our topics is um, access to education and on social media last week we discussed the situation in Nigeria with the Boko Haram. So some of them were wondering why cutting edge technology or drones weren't used in rescuing these girls. I've received some really great questions and I'll answer some of them now. Well, the Boko Haram are essentially Islamist militants. The name translates in the local language to mean um, Western education is a sin or Western education is forbidden. And this group especially opposes education of women. Under its interpretation of Sharia law, women should be married off and at home raising children and taking care of their husbands, not at school learning and learning to read and write. It's repeatedly targeted places of education and deadly attacks. Terrorists do this to instill fear and spread their message, um, their fundamental philosophy, and in this case, against education. This is one of the reasons that it's become increasingly difficult for groups like ours to set up educational institutions, because doing so publicly would, put, would be essentially putting a target on our backs or on the backs of the children that would attend our schools. But we stand committed because we know that education is the key to breaking, truly breaking any cycle of poverty. The children that are abducted are both Christian and Muslim students that are enrolled in secular schools. Um, but not all cases involve kidnapping. Guns and bombings have, been, have killed thousands of students in the past few years. In February, the Boko Haram attacked a federal college, and then in the same area gunned down 20 students and their teacher. 
So um, also the number of people that have been affected by this is far greater than we'll ever read in the news. There's a deep-rooted history of human trafficking here and the criminal network is quite sophisticated which is um, what makes it easier for them to conceal their activities. Well, it, it won't be easy. For one, the hundreds of girls seized most recently from the high school are not in a central location where the government has a firm presence or an understanding of the terrain. The area that they're believed to be held is remote and deeply forested and it's close to Cameroon, which means that the extremists and the children can slip through the poorest borders into places like Chad or Niger. The large number of hostages may also be limiting Nigeria's efforts, and this means that airstrikes that, ha that were deployed previously won't be uh, possible. And ground assaults isn't a great option either, not when it's done in unfamiliar terrain against heavily entrenched uh, armed fighters. Uh, Abby, the U.S. says the militant groups has links to Al-Qaeda affiliates in West Africa and to extremist groups in Mali. How closely related Boko Haram is to Al-Qaeda is hard to define, but I believe that the groups are on par. The bottom line is that they're on the U.S. State Department's list of terror organizations, and they are getting their training and weapons from someone. Boko Haram could be absorbing some of the, West, the weapons that are flowing across the Sahara into Libya. Locally, I know that they stress that publicly discussing their efforts and strategy could hinder their efforts of reaching them, but I also know that the United States and other countries have offered support. While I'm here at the World Economic Forum, among the many topics that we'll be covering, we'll discuss risk and resilience in Africa, um, faith and conflict transformation, and the best way to secure the future. We highlight the importance of taking collaborative action among public and private entities that are investing into infrastructure and education and the markets. Um, violence involving the contended armed groups and communal violence is increasing. But what is the best way to secure the future and the best way to respond to emerging security threats? With global social leadership, I hope that it opens the discussion to how privileged we are to have access to secure education. I just hope and pray for the children. My hope is that this serves as a reminder of the incredible injustices around the world. Over half of the participants at the World Economic Forum are leaders from African nations. And in the African tradition, when your neighbor has a tragic occurrence, they don't run away. So my hope is that in hosting the forum here, that this provides an opportunity for leaders around the world to come together to shed a light on some of the issues here as well. Thank you for watching and caring.